Okay, hello everyone. So today we'll be looking at some section one type questions. So first one's um, given two questions here. So in this document uh, uploaded. So in both of them, pretty much half the question, like being able to solve it, comes from being able to reorganize the information that you're given. Okay, so take a look at this one. So classical problem solving type question. Um, I'm assuming you guys have read through all these. So how can I reorganize that information into a simple uh, visual format. Okay, that, that's that's the crux of it, right? So we have three couples, J and K, L and M, N and O, okay, have dinner at a restaurant together, and we know that K M O are women. So we have J, K, L, M, N, O. The reason I've organized it in this way is because I can easily um, put them in categories that on the left hand side are the males and the right hand side are the females. Okay? And they eat different kind of entrees, pork chops, roast pea, salt fish, tile fish, and veal. So if I were to write that down, I'll just write P, R, S, T, and V. Okay? So the reason I wouldn't put in a um, diagram like that where I have the names of the people and what they eat is because there's five options here and six people and multiple people can have the same type of food. So it's, it's no point me organizing it in this kind of grid-like format. So anyways, uh, P, R, S, T, and P. Okay. And we can pretty much um, cancel out all this information because we've uh, just re-diagrammed it. Well, going through the clues here, two people in each couple do not order the same kind of entree as each other. So male does not order the same in that couple. So I can also write that as they do not equal, just to um, make sure I remember. Okay, so that's done. None of the men order the same kind of entree as any of the other men. So I can put an equal sign to it. Um, none of the men, MX does not equal MY or MZ, whatever it is, JLNN. Okay, rule two done. Marie orders swordfish. So I can just say, uh, I can just write, put a, like a small indication here saying that Marie orders swordfish. Neither John nor Nat, nor Nat orders a fish entree. So which are the fish entrees we have? We have swordfish and tilefish, okay? So neither John nor Nat. So I can put next to them, not S, not T, yeah? Okay? Not S, not T. Olive orders roast beef. Olive orders roast beef, okay? So... All these clues, all this done, we don't really need to refer to that um, the, that text again. We just can work with our uh, diagram we have here, okay? So before I go ahead and try and solve these questions, I want to think about what other interpretations I can come up with these. What, How can I simplify this game board, okay? Going by the first rule, male uh, people in the same couple do not order the same kind of food. If Olive orders roast beef, that means that Nat does not order roast beef. So I can do that. If Marie orders swordfish, then L doesn't order swordfish. Okay, um, that's pretty much it. So I guess I can. What I can do is write down. Um, just want the P R S T E. So I can write down the possibilities that each of the uh, men can have. So N can have, can't have R, can't have S, can't have T. So it's only left with options P R V, um, L P R T V. And J can order P R B. Okay. So that's pretty much all the simplification I can do. Now let's go ahead and try and solve the questions. Okay, which one of the following is a complete and accurate list of any of the entries in which L could order? So I guess all these four are possibilities. There's nothing in the rules that says that you know any of them can't order, so I can just go ahead and click D. That's an answer. Excuse me. Which of the following statements could be true? John orders the same kind of um, entree as Marie does. So John and Marie. Marie orders swordfish, and we know um, that John doesn't, so we can rule this one out. Kate orders the same kind of entree as Nat. K and N. So that is a possibility because we have nothing here that says that Kate can't order this or Kate can't. And you know, it could well be P or V. So I can when they say questions, questions that says could be true, as soon as I figure out, you know, if that is possible, I can just move on. I don't really need to check it at all. 
Okay, and if it says must be true, like in this question, then th that's a different story. Um, we got to make sure that all the other options can be has to be ruled out. Okay, one of the men orders. Like, let's look at question three. One of the men orders P or V. So one of them does order P or V, J or L or N has to order only P or V. Um, but that must be true. Um, S or V. Okay. So again, we have to choose this A. Question four. If John orders V, then which one of the following statements must be true? If John orders V. So we can go ahead and try and circle V just for this question. Remember, all the rules that says if, it only applies to this question, doesn't apply to the whole question. Okay, if John orders V, which one of the following must be true? So that means that L cannot be V, going by this rule that uh, males cannot have had the same food. And N cannot have V. So if N cannot have V, what are the options I have? I have N must be P. And therefore, P must be ruled out from here. Then L um, can only order R or T. Okay. So, which of the following must be true? And going through the options, I can see that Nat has to order P. That's the only possibility that he has. Okay. Uh, let me just erase the next question. Okay. If none of the six people order P, so if none of the six people order P, so I have to rule out P, 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 okay? Again, simple, simplifying it, this has to be V. If Nat is a V, then L cannot be a V, and J cannot be a V. If J cannot be P, V, S, or T, it must be R. If J is R, L cannot be R, J, L must be a T. Um, which one following must be true? Should John order Seville? Nope. Kate orders T, nope, L orders T, yep, okay, so therefore it must be C. Okay, remember I want to erase out all the um, possibilities, that was the new rule that was applied to just this question, so, um, okay, so what do we have, C, okay, question six. If Lewis orders P, so if Lewis orders P again, Go here, cannot be P, cannot be P, has to be V, cannot be V, has to be R. Which one following is a complete list, any of which John could order? John can only order R, really, because P or R and R, V is taken, so A. Okay, again, I want to rule out all um, the new rules for this question. So, A, okay. Suppose that people in each couple both order the same kind of entrees to each other, rather than different. So, this this is a very important different rule because we have to pretty much um, redo our diagram, right? So let me just see if I can just quickly redraw that up down here. J, K, L, M, N, O. So they have to order the same kind of thing. And based on the question we had that was that um, M was S, O was R. So based on that, this guy must be S and this guy must be R. The other rules still have to be the same. So like this one where neither uh, neither John nor Nat orders a fish on tray. So again, cannot have a S or a T. So it cannot S or a T. We don't need, really need to uh, write that for Nat because we know what he orders R. Okay, so what are my options? P, R, V. Okay, P, R, V. Okay, um, if all the other conditions remain the same and no two women order the same kind of on tray. So cannot be R, Kate cannot be R. Which one of the following statements could be true? So Kate can only order P or V, which means that John can only order P or V, because you know both uh, people in the same couple have to order the same kind of food. So um, going through the list, I can see um, me, two people, no, um, two other people order pork chops. So which two? John and um, Kate. Okay, because it's saying that could be true. The rest can't be true. Let's just go through that quickly. John orders roast beef. John doesn't uh, order roast beef because we cancelled out. John orders swordfish. Nope, we already cancelled out. Kate orders roast beef. Nope, we cancelled that out. Two of the other people order tilefish. Not really. None of them really have the option. Okay. So again, going through the question, you want to, every time you come across questions like this, think about a way in which you can restructure the data into something like a visual format and then half your question is done and you just have to go through them, through the rules quite quickly. Okay. All right. Going through the next question. Okay. I'm assuming you guys have had a chance to look at the questions and attempt it on your own first. Okay. 
Same thing, how can I restructure this data? Okay. What kind of question is this? This is like one of those Venn diagram questions. Okay. That's 50% of uh, doing the question, really. And I know my total is 100, and I have three, three categories. One, two, three. Let me just write that as good grades, social life, or enough sleep, social life, enough sleep, okay? So good grades, social life, enough sleep. All this really doesn't really come into play, it's just uh, definitions. So we can go ahead and do this. So let's go look at the rules. 35 students achieve areas of enough sleep. So remember that 35 doesn't just include this bit, includes this bit and this bit and this bit, I guess. Um, let me choose a different color, okay. So how would I be able, how can I write 35 here? I cannot just write 35 like that. No, I've got to find a way to do it. And if you look at the other rules, they're all saying something which I can't really put into the um, diagram yet. The only thing I can actually put down is the fact that the total has to be 100%. Or 100 because you know there's 100 students you can take out the percentage to the matter so the way to go about this is to label them a b c d e f and g okay once you label it you can use simultaneous equations simultaneous equations to try and solve it so d plus e plus f plus g equals 35 okay 40 of them achieved good grades, so that's A, B, and D, and E. A plus B plus D plus E equals 2, 40. 20, so rule 1 and 2 done. 25 had a good social life, so what's that? B plus C plus E plus F. 25. So the next rule says that 5% had enough sleep in social life, so um, 25 is social life. So five percent had enough sleep in social life. Which area are they talking about, really? So enough sleep and sorry, enough sleep in social life. Five percent. Saying E plus F is five percent. E plus F equals to five percent. Done. Um, five percent had good grades in social life, so good grades and social life is B plus E. It's also five. B plus E is also equal to five. Okay, ten percent um, had achieved good grades and enough sleep. Ten percent good grades and enough sleep. So that's D plus E equals. 20% 20 achieved good sleep but did not have good grades or social life. This we can put inside the uh, data. So enough uh, good sleep, so 20%. So G equals to 20. All right. So how many students achieved enough sleep, good grades, and had a social life? Um, so they're pretty much asking out what their middle bit is. What, what is E going to be? Okay. So working through this, so what is E going to be? Um, and we know G is 20. So if G is 20. Um, let's see what we can do. Uh, looking at this. So B plus E is 5. So cancelling out B plus E. So it's equal to C plus F is 20. What else can I do? D plus E is 40. So D plus, oh sorry, D plus E is 10. Cancelling that out. I know that A plus B is 30. Um, and again, here we have D plus E is because it's 10, uh, F plus G is 25, and because we know what G is 20, so therefore F must be equal to 5. So F equals to 5. If F is 5, then E must be 0, looking at this rule. Okay? How many achieved, so the next question, how many students achieved just good grades but not, not enough sleep or social life? So just good grades, so that's just A. So if F is 5, E is 0, um, what else can we have from this? E is 0. Let's look at this one. I know what D plus E is. I need to find out what B is, really. 
um, b plus a is 5, looking at this, b plus a is 5, and since a equals, to five, uh, equals 0, b has to equal 5. So if this is 5, then that must be 25. a must equal 25. Okay. How many students do not have good grades, social life, or enough sleep? So they pretty much, win, pretty much need to add up and find out what a, b, c, d, e, f, and g are and subtract it by 100. Okay. So what do I need? I need I've got um, d plus e plus f, so a plus b plus c plus e plus f plus g equals to 1. So based on this, I know that d, e, f, g is equal to 30. 35, sorry. d, e, f, g is 35. Um, we know that a, looking at this one, um, what, was, what did we say a was? a was 25, wasn't it? So 25. And b plus c, what did we have? B, we had b is 5. Let's find out what c is. If this is 5 and e plus f is equal to 5. Therefore, um, that's c equals has to equal 15. If I add that up, that's a 30, 45, 45, and 45 plus 35, what do we get? 0, 7, 80. So that's an 80. Subtracting from the 100, you will be left with 20 because that 100 is the total number. Okay, so again, these questions are quite straightforward once you know how to diagram it well. Okay, hope you guys found that useful.